Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. So we're continuing our coverage of update 1.31, this time by doing our first car review of the 5 new cars that came along with this update. First up I'm going to cover what in my opinion is the biggest hidden gem of the bunch of cars that came with 1.31, the Porsche Carrera GTS 904 from 1964. A couple of hours after this video is uploaded, I'll be doing my money grind method with this car. It's actually a zero stop car at Le Mans. It's fantastic overall. However, let's get back on track and talk about the car itself. Coming in at 2.5 million, it is the most expensive car from update 1.31. Its performance figures may not blow you away, however there is something to note that is very very good about this car is its weight. Coming in at 650 kilograms it weighs literally nothing, putting out 179 brake horsepower from a naturally aspirated engine. Now let's get into the review, if you've never joined me for a review this is how it works. We take the bog standard out of the box car around the Nordschleife for a hot lap. If it makes a big mistake or a crash or anything ridiculous like that. I will restart the lap however if it gets a clean lap in that is its lap over and done with and we'll see where it places on our lap time leaderboard after that we'll go for a fully modified version with all the upgrades possible on it and take it for a hot lap around the high speed ring where we'll see where it ranks on our modified lap time leaderboard so let's talk about the stock version of the Porsche Carrera GTS 904. In my opinion, this is up there as one of my instant favorite classic cars currently within Gran Turismo 7. It's an absolute joy to drive even in its standard form. Whilst its performance figures may not absolutely blow you away in terms of its power output, putting out a measly 179 brake horsepower, which seems like nothing with some of the cars that we have in the game, that weight at 650 kilograms really does allow you to throw it through the corners, especially on those tighter tracks where this car literally excels and feels fantastic to drive. It really does kind of take off in terms of its acceleration. It's actually rather impressive, again, helped by the weight of this thing. In terms of its handling, it's pretty fine. It's nothing absolutely fantastic. I did notice that it does like to get its rear end out. However, it's very much controllable, especially with the little bit of power that it puts out. Like I said, 179 brake horsepower. So it's not going to absolutely throw you into the barrier. And once you kind of get a feeling for this car, you'll be more than doing some happy laps in no time. The only real downside I noticed to this car is the brakes really do show their age. They're not fantastic at all. So you will be required to begin to slow down a lot sooner than you may naturally think in a car that weighs this much. However, once you do get a feeling for it, like I said, this is going to be a fantastic all around car. Even if it's not the most powerful thing in the world, it's definitely a track car and it feels fantastic to string together a bunch of corners with this little thing. So from standard, would I say it's worth the 2.5 million alone? In all honesty, no. To be quite honest, there's cheaper alternatives in terms of driving experience with extra power, maybe a little bit more weighty, but they will be much, much quicker. However, there is a great thing about this car that I love. Once you build this for Le Mans, it is fantastic around there. And that is a massive credit to this car. It's actually possible to non-stop Le Mans with this car, even once it's kind of cruising around in the wets with the new handling physics aquaplaning is definitely much more controllable whereas before you'd put the power down and you'd have no feeling in the car and you'd basically be a passenger into the barrier that doesn't seem as present as you know currently in the game so definitely take advantage of that you can stay out on dry tires even if you're in kind of intermediate conditions which is where this car excels it's lightweight means it basically just glides over everything and feels fantastic even with you know, dry tires in a wet situation, meaning that Le Mans is easily, it's, you know, the high point in terms of this car. Taking it around there, you will basically be able to do the entire 30 minutes with minimal tire wear, minimal fuel usage, and basically not have to suffer through those minute long pit stops at all. So for that reason alone, I would say it is worth the 2.5 million. However, that does require you to modify it. So we're going to round up the stock review here. And in all honesty, I would say, yes, get it if you're a Porsche fanatic. Get it if you like classic cars or just get it if you're a collector like myself. But if you're a little bit on a tighter budget, maybe just wait, grind with a few other cars and then go back and pick it up once you're a bit more comfortable with money. 
trust me, this thing will earn its own money back in absolutely no time when done correctly. So with the stock review done, let's go ahead and see where it places on our Nordschleifer lap time leaderboard. It comes under the 500 PP category and it's actually came 8th overall with a time of 8 minutes 9.189, making it faster than the 911 Carrera RS, the 964 model from 1992 and the R32 GTR, as well as some other surprising cars such as the Corvette ZR1 and the 911 Turbo. Overall, that is a very, very respectable time, mostly helped by its light weight through the tighter sections. So next up is the modified version review, and this is where this car massively excels, and I would say it is definitely worth that 2.5 million. It's still lightweight, it's still not putting out stupid amounts of power, around about 360 brake horsepower, I believe. So it's nothing mind-blowing, but again, couple that with 650 kilograms of weight, and this thing will absolutely fly, no problem. The only downside to it is it actually runs out of gears, even with the racing transmission, so it does top out at around about 160 miles an hour in the straights. So let's check in with its hot lap around the high speed ring. As you can see, it's pretty much topping out almost instantly. This thing is massively quick on acceleration. It's insanely quick and stable through the corners. So it's gonna top out very, very early on a track such as the high speed ring, which again, doesn't play on the strengths of this car. It's definitely the handling, the fuel consumption, and the tire wear for this thing, where it massively excels over pretty much anything within Gran Turismo 7. I do also want to give a quick shout out to Polyphony for such a stunning and detailed interior. Inside of this car is beautiful, and if you are a VR player like myself, I certainly recommend taking it out in VR because trust me, the detail in this thing is absolutely mind blowing. But back to the hot lap anyway, as you can see through the tighter sections where it requires to get down speed and such, this car is insanely planted and insanely stable, definitely taking advantage of the racing hards that it is currently running in this run. As you can see, it is massively quick to accelerate and it will handle all of the corners no problem. Even the bank corners, it won't even kick its rear end out. It will handle them very, very nicely, especially if you're running the bank in and it will accelerate extremely quickly out. So it's gonna go up and cross the line to finish off the high speed ring run. And there we go. So let's go and see how this car goes on our hot lap leaderboard for the high speed ring alongside other modified cars. So this one falls under the 600 PP category when it's fully modified, coming in a performance point rating of 640.38. Obviously quite low, there's been a massive change in terms of the overall PP ratings of cars, and it's putting out 328 brake horsepower at 650 kilograms, meaning it did it 13th overall with a 1 minute 15.072 on a track that is definitely not to its advantage, still beating some of the older Porsches as well. So that is going to be it for my Porsche 904 review and in my opinion this is one of the highlights of update 1.31 and definitely isn't to be slept on. If you get it upgraded right this is a fantastic grinding car and it's instantly become one of my favourites and I still feel like it's going to be the hidden gem of the bunch and massively overlooked especially by the 959 which everybody seems to absolutely adore. However, this car is honestly not one to be slept on. It's a fantastic little car, and I fall in love with it every time I drive it. Thank you so much for joining me. That is going to be it for the car reviews for today. I'll have my money method using this car up around about 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. GMT. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn those notifications on, and I will see you all later on. Have a fantastic day, guys. Peace.